Hollywood is falling apart right now. Over 10,000 writers are out of work and are picketing outside of film studios. Disney Entertainment has laid off 7,000 employees, causing companies like Warner Discovery and Paramount to follow suit with budget cuts. Actors have authorized a potential strike, so it's possible that all your favorite stars could stop working completely. Today, I'm gonna explain all the drama that's going on in Hollywood, why workers are going on strike, and what this means for the future of the entertainment industry as a whole. Hello there, my name is Michaela Lysak, Welcome to my YouTube channel or welcome back to my YouTube channel. And it's been a hot minute since I've done a sit down video, but we're back. If you're new here, my whole channel is about the Los Angeles film and television industry and what it's like pursuing a career in Hollywood. I make lifestyle vlogs about what it's like being an actor and screenwriter in the city, industry commentary videos like this, and tutorials about how to break into the entertainment world. If that interests you, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you here. We're growing, we hit 300,000 subscribers and it would mean the world if you liked this video because I put in a lot of hours researching for this topic. Without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start by explaining the WGA writer strike which I'm sure a lot of you have already heard about through the news or through social media, maybe even through my Instagram profile because I participated in one of these strikes. I also vlogged at the strike, so stay tuned, subscribe for that. But as a member of SAG-AFTRA, I stand in solidarity with the WGA. What is the WGA? WGA stands for the Writers Guild of America. The Writers Guild of America is a labor union that represents over 11,000 writers in film and TV. Sometimes you'll see the acronym in different forms, maybe as WGAW, which stands for Writers Guild of America West, or as WGAE, which stands for Writers Guild of America East. One for the LA girls and one for the New York girls. Even though there's two different branches, they work together and they basically provide the same rights. A labor union representing the thousands of creators who write scripted series, features, news programs, and other content. Founded in 1933, the guild negotiates and administers contracts that protect the creative and economic rights of our members. So that's who the WGA is. They negotiate contracts, make sure everything is fair for the writers, and those contracts get renegotiated every three years. Okay, 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 okay. So they're negotiating, but who are they negotiating with? Who? That would be the AMPTP, which stands for the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. I know, we have a lot of acronyms today. Okay, so what does the AMPTP do? They bargain and negotiate on behalf of all major motion picture and television studios. They negotiate 30 industry-wide collective bargaining agreements on behalf of over 350 motion picture and television producers. Okay, well girl, who in specific do the AMPTP represent? Who are they bargaining for? Sony Pictures, Universal Studios, Paramount Pictures, Warner Brothers, Walt Disney Studios, Broadcast TV, ABC, NBC, CBS, and streamers like Netflix, Apple TV, Amazon. So the AMPTP represents those companies and negotiates with different labor unions in the film and television industry, like the WGA, like the Directors Guild of America, like SAG-AFTRA, the Screen Actors Guild, so many different unions. Now that you know who these people are, who's involved, let's talk about why this strike is happening. Essentially, when it came time to renegotiate contracts between the WGA and the AMPTP, they couldn't reach an agreement. They couldn't see eye to eye. The WGA called for a strike authorization vote, which was basically the union saying, hey members, if we don't reach a fair deal in the contracts, are you okay with going on strike? And 98% of them said, yes, we're okay with going on strike. So now, spoiler alert, they're on strike. Here are all the reasons why the WGA is striking. The streaming era. The streaming era has significantly changed the landscape of Hollywood. When I refer to the streaming era, I'm talking about the rise of subscription-based content and the death of cable and network television, which I can make a video about if you're interested. Now, in the era of network television, seasons lasted a lot longer in episode length. Remember when your favorite TV show had 22 episodes a season? Yeah, the, those were different times. Now, seasons only last maybe 8 to 10 episodes. With less episodes, that means there's less work for writers, meaning that writers are out of a job faster. And a lot of people don't really know this, but when you're on a writer's staff, being staffed, that's a type of job where you move up in the ranks and that happens over time. So I'm pretty sure in your contracts, you're insured that after a certain amount of time being staffed on a show, you will be promoted to a higher position, meaning higher pay. But because shows have less episodes and writers are not staying on shows as long, 
there's no ability to move up to get a higher position to get higher pay so there isn't as much security um there isn't the ability to get better credits because staffing is all about working your way up because seasons are shorter, that has also led to a phenomenon called mini rooms. An average writer's room is usually composed of seven to 10 staff writers to write and produce 10 episodes of TV for 12 to 22 weeks. This time frame includes rewriting material as needed as the show starts to film episodes. Comparatively, mini rooms are often eight to 10 weeks long, but occur before a show is even greenlit and features smaller team of writers. Since the show has yet to be greenlit, but is putting together an entire season, the writers are paid less to do more work and the work is always at risk of never being seen because the studio can still decide not to greenlight the series or shelve it for months at a time. I'm gonna quote the New York Times. Mini room writers are sent home after just as little as 10 weeks and are frequently not around for the production process at all, which is a very huge problem. It is extremely important in the television world that writers are on set for the process, even after the episode is written. I've worked on network television for 10 years, for 10 long years, okay? I can tell you that being an actor on set, you are constantly working with the writers who are just off set in those little chairs. They're constantly rewriting things. They're going in after cuts and having people come in with alternate lines for you to read. It is a fluid process and writing specifically for television does not stop after the episode is written, you know what I mean? Or it stops once, you know, they print it. Um, in editing, but it's also going to take away valuable knowledge that writers need when operating on a television set. Writers have also said that the sudden growth of mini rooms has disrupted the decades long art of learning how to make a television show. Mike Schur, the creator of The Good Place and co-creator of Parks and Recreation said in an interview that when he was a young writer on The Office, he learned to write a script, rewrite, edit, work with actors, and became familiar with specialized crafts like set design and sound mixing. So the WJ is basically concerned that if this continues, writers are not gonna be able to understand how to operate in these environments. They're not going to be proficient in working on a television set. As a lot of you guys know, I'm actually in college to become a screenwriter. I'm majoring in writing for screen and television at the USC School of Cinematic Arts, the top film school in the whole entire nation, with alumni such as Shonda Rhimes, Tracy Oliver, Ryan Coogler, George Lucas, John Singleton, the list goes on. It's a very prestigious film school, a 3% acceptance rate. I'm very, very grateful that I go there. And if you're interested in my college journey, I have a full set of vlogs so you can see behind the scenes the school in specific tailors its classes to be very reminiscent of what you will see in the professional industry. And I've learned that writer's rooms are extremely important. Having a lot of people and a lot of input, opinions, ideas, the more hands-on, the more eyes on the project really enhances the quality of whatever you're writing. Because of mini rooms, writers now don't have the extra hands on deck, making their jobs harder, but also making them have to take on more work, extra work that they didn't need to for the past few decades. The writers are also concerned about AI. I'm gonna briefly talk about this because just AI in general is just, I'm not a technology expert. AI, as we've seen it right now, is not advanced enough to write television maybe cheap television, maybe cheesy, predictable television, um, but nothing of substance, of depth, of just good work, good television. Okay, it's not gonna do it. A lot of writers have even tested this technology and have like seen the, like a scene that a chatbot would write. And it's just very surface level. It's not subtextual. If you really watch television, I could really go into this. If you watch good film, good television, writing it says everything that's not going on ai cannot i i'm gonna digress i'm gonna digress i'm not gonna talk about this i could go into it okay screenwriting is my passion i'm such a nerd about this i'm so sorry don't leave just subscribe if you haven't already we're at this point of the video and you are subscribed come on now and also residuals which are essential so essential for creatives working in the film industry basically a residual payment is not the initial payment you get for working on a job but it's the payment that you get um after working on a job when maybe if you wrote an episode of television it airs you know overseas or somebody buys it you just you get paid like a small percentage and that really helps in between jobs because for anybody working in Hollywood, you know that you never know when you're gonna have a job or when you're not. And because past contracts didn't account for the boom in streaming and the streaming era, they need to get that resolved 
in their contracts so they're negotiating that as well just to make sure that the transition from cable to streaming is also fair in the residuals department but here's why the amptp is having a hard time budging on giving writers more money. The AMPTP was saying it's not the best time for them to do wage increases right now. Why? Because they're getting a ton of pressure from Wall Street, from their shareholders. Wall Street wants to see more profit from investments into streaming. That is why Disney has laid off 7,000 employees and that's caused Warner Brothers and Paramount to also follow suit and just a lot of other companies. They're trying to do budget cuts like that. So not only are the writers out of work right now, but like even more people are out of work in Hollywood. The AMPTP also argues the writer's demands would require that they be kept on staff and paid when there is no work for them. So this goes along with what we were talking about, shorter episode orders. If writing needs to be done, writers are hired. But these proposals require the employment of writers, whether they're needed for the creative process or not. So what does this mean for the future of Hollywood? Nobody really knows how long this will last. Right now, the immediate impact is going to happen to late night shows. For television series, we see a lot of seasons getting delayed because writers are not going to participate. We even saw this with the Duffer Brothers, they're delaying production on Stranger Things because they're in the WGA. So right now productions are just kind of going off you know, content that they have. If this continues, a lot of viewers are going to recognize a dip in new TV series. In the area of motion pictures, we're not really gonna see a very big difference unless the writer's strike continues on for a very long time. Because movies, it takes years for them to come out. So things that were filmed a year ago are gonna come out, you know, in the next few years and we're gonna have content, but if this continues for a long time, then it will affect the motion picture world. New content will just not be produced. And I think there will actually be a rise in reality TV content. I think that the industry might then focus on that. People might gravitate towards YouTube, who knows? Actors could be going on strike as well, which would be my union, SAG-AFTRA. SAG-AFTRA represents approximately 160,000 actors, announcers, broadcast journalists, dancers, DJs, news writers, editors, program hosts, puppeteers, recording artists, singers, stunt performers, voiceover artists, and other media professionals. Like the WGA, it is a labor union that seeks to protect the rights of performers and they negotiate our contracts. So recently, my union in May, they held a strike authorization vote, basically asking their members for the up and coming contract negotiations with the AMPTP, whether they would be willing to go on strike if they can't reach an agreement. And just to be clear, a strike authorization vote does not mean that SAG-AFTRA is going on strike. It's more of a leverage point in negotiations. Basically SAG-AFTRA will tell the AMPTP, hey, 97% of our union said it's going to strike. Our union will strike if you don't accept our terms. You know what I mean? It's just, it's gonna be used as a tool for negotiations. There's a lot of concerns SAG-AFTRA has going into these negotiations. One being AI, as you've probably seen on TikTok and social media, the likeness and the voices of performers are being used without regulation online. On TikTok, you see videos of Ariana Grande singing a Drake song or Drake singing an Ariana Grande song and it sounds like their voices. Deep fakes and all of these things are gonna affect us as actors. We also are concerned about self-tape auditioning. Since the pandemic, us actors, we don't audition in person anymore. We have to film our auditions in our room with our mother as our reader or our friend as a reader. Additionally, the union wants to curb the practice of self-tape auditions, a trend that has accelerated during the pandemic. Studios and casting directors increasingly have required actors to submit video of themselves auditioning for roles, forcing them to take on audition costs that have typically been the responsibility of productions, the union has said. Also due to the streaming era, we have concerns about residuals as well, just like the writers. Potentially, we could strike, potentially. So we're gonna see. So what does that mean for the future of Hollywood? Well, if actors do go on strike, that means productions will be halted entirely for scripted content. If you're filming something and an actor walks off set because they're on strike, you have nothing to film. The actors are the, the main thing. They're the characters of the show. And without the characters, there's nothing to film. That's why a lot of people are saying that reality TV might become a really popular thing um, due to the current landscape of Hollywood. But I will say, even though it seems like the industry is in shambles, 
what's holding it together is the support that these creators have for each other. You see SAG AFTRA walking on the picket lines beside the writers, standing in solidarity and in support. People on social media supporting the writers and encouraging them on their pursuit of fair wages. As you'll see in my writer strike vlog, if you, uh, you know, subscribe and wait for that future video to come out, you'll see that even when we were on the picket lines, there were cars passing by honking in support of us, just the locals around LA. Community and an understanding of what these creatives are going through is what's holding together Hollywood right now. So I encourage you to support the writers, support creatives, support all of the people who are creating your favorite content, all of your favorite characters, all of your favorite shows, the things that make you laugh and cry that are able to entertain you. These people, the writers, they're the true genius behind all of this content. Okay, that is all for this video. I don't know if it's gonna be a long one, but it was definitely a long process of filming. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I did a huge deep dive, so please like this video. Subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna have a lot more fun videos like this, more sit down videos. Definitely comment down below what you wanna see next from me. And if you stayed till the end of this video, comment cactus so I know that you stayed until the end. And when I'm reading through comments, I'll know that you're a real one. And when I see you guys comment the keywords, I like your comments, I respond, so definitely do that. And if you're looking for more content from me, I actually filmed a vlog at a premiere in Hollywood. So be sure to go check that out. You want to see kind of a day in the life of what it's like living in Hollywood, what it's like in the industry behind the scenes. Definitely go over there and check out that video. Thank you so much for watching. I post every Sunday and I will see you in the next one. Bye.